Hi, Sheila here. Some of you may recognize me from the community center. I have been leading a meditation group pretty much, I think for about a year now. We meet twice a month and we talk about meditating our experiences and we meditate together and it's been a delightful group. I thought that today I could offer some of the techniques up to anyone willing to try and I'll talk about why they could be helpful. But first I'll just tell you that I began meditating in the early 70s with a transcendental meditation practice. I became a Kripalu yoga instructor in 2000 and I found Vipassana and insight about eight years ago it became my practice. About a year ago or so I began a mindfulness meditation teacher certification program that is um, led by Jack Cornfield and Tara Brock, along with the Greater Good Science Center. So although it's a very large group, I meet in a small group um, several times a month with a mentor and with cohorts who are practicing and practicing teaching. So it is from that and those practices that I've learned and that sustain me that I reach out with some tips, some ways to find some peace um, within our minds and within our homes at this point, since we are kind of confined and may have a lot of news and information coming at us. Um, some of these techniques will be a way to help us manage the impact of all of that news, all the things we really cannot control. So, um, we can bring our awareness away from the news and the thoughts, the thoughts that become emotions that you might recognize as anxiety, doubt, and fear. Things um, that make us feel unsettled and that can have an impact on our general sense of well-being, our ability to fall asleep at night or digest our food properly or live harmoniously with the people who may be sharing our home. So in terms of anchors, I want to offer up two today. Uh, one is the breath and one is sensation in the body. And I like coupling them together at this point because it's become very apparent that for some people, watching the breath and closing their eyes is just not a comfortable or safe place. So I'll talk about both things um, that you can try together or individually. So to begin with the breath, um, when it's regulated, when it's smooth, when it's the same amount of breath coming in as out, when we are able to rest our awareness on those sensations, it has the ability to kind of announce to our nervous system that it's okay to let go and relax. And that can be a very healthy place to be. So that practice would look like sitting quietly someplace, either lying down or sitting in a chair without your smartphone, without the TV on, and just dedicate five or 10 minutes or however much time you uh, feel comfortable with to observing the breath as it moves in and out of the body slowly and rhythmically. Typically placing a hand on the belly encourages um, a connection to the sensation. So um, as we inhale the belly, and if our hand is on our belly, the hand would move out. And as we exhale, the belly and the hand would move back in towards the spine. And so it is a rhythm of in and out, belly up and down. And especially if you're lying down, you will notice the belly rise and fall with the breath. Small children are often encouraged to do this with a breathing buddy, uh, quite possibly a stuffed animal on the belly that rises and falls to the breath. They can watch it and they can feel it. So adults can of course use a stuffed animal, but a bag of rice, maybe even a small bag of chocolate chips has been suggested, or just your hand or again, sitting up. The idea is to observe the breath without comment, really. What often helps anchor our awareness to the breath is layering counting. 
So we layer this um, connection to counting. You can count slowly from one to four as you inhale and slowly from one to four as you exhale or one to four and four to one. You can count each inhale as one and the exhale as one and the next breath as two and the next two would release so forth. So it's just a question of finding what makes sense for you and what feels comfortable and sticking with one of those patterns for at least one sitting or so. And of course, when thoughts join you, um, we just need to have the attitude and the intention of letting them be there, but moving towards the breath, towards the anchor that we've chosen rather than engaging and following what we might think of as a thought train. So sometimes we get on the train and we forget that we can get off. These techniques will help us to get off for a while. And so if breathing is kind of not the comfort zone for you, then sensation in the body is an excellent anchor. So this is not a hierarchy. One is not really better than the other. They are equally skillful. So looking for sensation in the body would be just that. We would sit still and we would draw our attention to a particular place in the body to observe. And um, it's often suggested that we use the feet, our seat, and our hands. Those are often places that are not emotionally charged. So the belly can often hold charges of emotion or the throat or the heart or the head but the feet, the seat, and our hands, which is kind of easy to remember, are often good places to bring your awareness to. What do the soles of my feet feel like? Even as I'm speaking right now, you might just notice where your hands have come to rest. And without moving them at all, just observe the weight of your hands, perhaps, in your lap. There is a sensation there. It's always there. Uh, we're just usually busy doing other things so that we don't notice. So these practices are about noticing, completely noticing what is going on in the present moment. So it gives us some relief from the thoughts that generally are of the past, which we have no control over, or the future which we usually don't have any control over either, or at least limited. And today we might have a sense of even less because the news is constantly changing. So um, we often think, well, I'll just keep planning and things will go according to plan, but we all know that is not always the case. So the safest place, the place with the least stress and the most power is the present moment. And these techniques help us to land there more fully. So uh, the practice is just of when we come, become aware of thoughts, we guide our breath or we look for sensation in the moment, just an observation. Be curious, what does my breath feel like? Where does the inhale become the exhale? And sensations in the body, they change as we sit, perhaps. What am I feeling now in my body? And feet, seat, or hands are just a beginning. You might start noticing your shoulders. And when you notice them, you might notice that they can relax a little more. What can I notice about the muscles in my face, my jaw? And sometimes, very often, just by noticing without really doing much more, ah, there's somewhat of a release. The most important thing is to be curious, to keep noticing, and to stay focused on those present moment sensations. So that's my uh, technique for today. I hope to join you periodically and offer other suggestions for grounding awareness, for deeply resting our nervous system and our minds. If you have questions and want to reach out to me, you can reach me through the community center. I will um, be happy to answer individual emails if there are questions, or perhaps just speak about 
um, whatever your questions are the next time that we meet, especially um, if we find that they might be of interest to a larger audience. So my hope is that these bring you some comfort, some relief and release. Again, you can practice them many times during the day. Especially helpful before we fall asleep at night, just to begin to slow down the thought process that might be with us all day if we're not being aware that there is another way to deal with those thoughts. So I hope you all stay safe and, um, and well, and I will look forward to talking with you again soon. Bye for now.